Well, it's official. Murder is now illegal in the state of California. The growing calls across the nation to defund the Giving them business down there. That's a 15-yard penalty. There's no foul on the play. It was not a hold. The, the defender was just overpowered. The illegal shift on the kicking team. That penalty is refused. Guns up, giddy up, Wolfpack. It's Failure to Stop. Failure to Stop's your favorite podcast. This is Illegal Shift, but Failure to Stop's the number one podcast and platform where we entertain first responders five days a week, which is almost all of the days. I'm John. I'm an M1 dispatch in the field. I'm joined, as always, by a little leprechaun. No, I'm joined by Chief Keefe of uh, some Ohio Fire Department. I always forget the name of it. I, I, I What I forget, Keefe, is if I'm allowed to say it or not. Uh, just outside Cincinnati. Just or... outside, some some suburb outside Cincinnati. Kiefer joins me today on a momentous day in the history of sports, and not just because it is also the first day of the Masters. For those of you listening at home, Kiefer is uh, draped in a most regal green jacket. It is the first day of the Masters, a golf tournament, and a, and a very dapper uh, green duckbill cap. Catching up with you, Kiefer, for the first time in a week. How are you, old friend? Oh, good to see you, my man. Good to see you. It is uh it's been a week. It has definitely been a week. We've got, like you said, the first day of the Masters, and then we're delivered with some breaking news today. So I was super excited to uh to get with you today. But uh you look well. Thanks. I keep all the sickness inside where it can't be seen. Keith, what's a <laughs> secret you don't want anyone to know? <laughs> uh, I'm scared of clowns. Oh, that's that's hardly a secret. All right, folks, uh, we got big news dropping on us in the history of uh, Earth. O.J. Simpson is dead. He has passed away. He's been murdered by cancer. Johnny Cochran will represent cancer at the forthcoming trial this summer, which is set to be quite a feat. Uh, O.J. Simpson, as we all know, uh, graduated from the University of Southern California, at least played ball there before he was drafted by the Buffalo Bills, played 11 uh, years Running back there, historic uh, seasons, uh, winning over the whole nation with his charm and playing style. And, of course, he won the Heisman when he was in college, and he went to Hall of Fame. And afterwards, he started some movies, the Naked Gun movies, and he was a pitch man for Hertz commercials. And then he had, you know, this uh, bit of a dust-up in the 90s. <laughs> Just a little bit of a dust-up. A little bit of a, you know, he... Had a setback, uh, you know, in the form of like uh, torturing and beating his uh, his ex wife Nicole Brown Simpson, which escalated into a reign of terror, and then uh, finally a fatal stabbing of her and Ron Goldman. He was acquitted by that jury, and in a, in a summer we'll never forget. It was sort of the first reality TV show, the the White Bronco, the slow the slow chase, uh, became instantly iconic as part of uh, the history of American killers. Where were, where were you at that day when that happened? Do you remember? Take, taking a bath. <laughs> Sorry, that's where I was at when I first found about, out about it. I was that's taking fair. a bath and it was on TV. And then, of course, it was on TV all that summer. But uh, when you're in the South, you just you, it's taking multiple baths in a day is not unusual just because, you you know, it's hot. Yeah. Uh, we, did, we grew up without air conditioning, but this show's not about me. It's not the so, heat. It's the humidity. John. Uh, well, it's also the relative humidity, but. Anyway, um, so he got acquitted of that, and then he had the civil case where he was actually found guilty. He was sued by the families of Ron Goldman and Cold Brown Simpson. Found guilty of that. Uh, in 2000, uh, he was in trouble again when he was in Florida. He got some sort of, uh, it was like some low felony, I think, like threatening or menacing somebody. He was acquitted yeah. of that. And then in 2005, he was found guilty of stealing satellite TV. <laughs> I didn't even know that one. Good yeah, he, he was like pirating uh, direct TV. And so he got in trouble for that. So so now we're all guilty because we're all we're all stealing streaming, streaming passwords. Uh I don't well, well not you. Not you. No, you're 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 me. innocent. I I am only on podcasts. I don't even have time to watch TV. <laughs> uh so then uh then 2007, uh he got convicted of armed robbery. And sentenced to 33 years in a Nevada State Correctional Facility. He served nine years before being released on parole. Uh, it was a bit of a deal. Um, he got to spend the rest of his life uh, just out doing uh, golfing, you know, looking for the real killers as he promised he would. 
I'm just going to read here from the AP just to kind of bring it all home. O.J. Simpson, legendary football player and action actor, brought down by his murder trial, died at 76. Oh, O.J. Simpson, the football star and Hollywood actor, acquitted of charges. He killed his former wife and her friend in a trial that mesmerized the public and exposed divisions on race and policing in America has died. Does anyone remember the whole Mark Furman incident? Because I don't think that that was a part of it at all. Like Mark <laughs> Furman used some unfortunate language, but I don't, I don't think that like that was a, and I might be remembering it wrong and it might just be that I don't care. And it might just be that, you know, I didn't live anywhere near there, but uh, I think that he looked bad, but I don't think that uh, you, I don't you're, think, a, you're absolutely correct. I don't think that race played a huge part in it. That's just my yeah. commentary. That's not from the AP. The family announced on Simpson's official X account, which they have the passwords to, so they, they're clearly pirating passwords as well, that he died Wednesday last night or yesterday of prostate cancer. I had you know, no idea he had cancer. I, had I, no think, I think I had heard of it. I didn't know it was prostate cancer. Uh, how how You know, this guy is a murderer and an unapologetic one. Am I allowed to make fun of him, Keith? Absolutely. Okay, because him died. The juice is no longer loose, as I put in my Instagram story. I saw that, and if you're not following uh, Keith on Instagram, you should at jkeith21. But uh, he died of butt cancer, uh, for lack for lack of a gentler term. He died in Las Vegas on Thursday. Is when the officials have finally announced it. He earned fame, fortune, and adulation through football and show business, but his legacy was forever changed by the June 94 knife slings of his wife, Nicole Brown Simpson, and her friend, Ron Goldman. I like how they always refer to them as friends. Like yeah, as friend. Yeah, I saw more, that. More going on there. Uh, but they were divorced, so what does it matter what her relationship was with Ron Goldman? Of course, in 95, he might have been, you know, he might have been a homosexual or something, and maybe they just, you know. It was a shopping buddy. I don't know. I don't know anything about Ron Goldman, and I'm not here to say anything about him, good or bad or or otherwise, or to, to say Doesn't anything about that. It's just weird that they always refer to him as, as her friend. He was later found liable for the deaths in a separate civil case, which even as late as last week, Keith, I was going on about the difference between criminal court and civil court and how OJ was sort of the classic example of that, how you can kill someone and not and be found not guilty under the law. Uh, but then still be sued. He served nine years in prison on unrelated charges, armed robbery. By the way, he was sentenced to 33 years. AP just goes right over that. And he was I, robbing for his own shit back. It was for his own memorabilia. Him and his some of his golfing buddies went out and got, got their isotoner gloves on and charged a, in a hotel with guns. And he's just like, oh, I thought I was confronting my friends about my 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 stuff, which every day people call me and say they want a civil standby. Uh He's got to know the difference in a civil suit. He lost enough money in a civil case. He's got to know how to sue people to get property back. Goldman's father, Fred, and his sister, Kim, released a statement acknowledging that the hope for true accountability has ended. Yeah, it kind of sucks that, you know, now he's dead. And, you know, it's been 30 years, but like the last glimmer of hope that there's ever going to be any justice for him in this world is over. Although getting 33 right, years on it, it said that you actually can get away with murder. You just have to die first. Uh, he got well. He literally did get away with it, though. No, he he got a, he got away with it, but now guess what? He he couldn't chase it either. Cancer murdered him. Yes, that's true. And he'll also be facing some consequences in the next life. Anyway, the news of Ron's killer passing away is a mixed bag of complicated emotions. It's kind of amazing that he would say that it was a complicated bag of emotions. Um, let's uh, also take this from Deadline, which uh, is a dubious news source, if ever there was one, about Cato Kalin. You remember Cato Kalin? Oh yeah. Uh, everybody that was a part of this trial became a, a, an instant, you know, American icon. Everybody knew who Cato Kalin was. I don't remember it as well, but I remember him uh, with his long blonde hair and him testifying. I think he might have been Nicole's lover. Is that the case, or no. another friend? Okay, no. maybe he was the tennis instructor. But he he was he was just living on OJ's estate, right? Oh, house guest, yeah. It yeah, says that right here. Cato Kalin, the house guest of OJ Simpson, whose testimony at the murder trial was among the more riveting and discussed, released a video statement today. Boy, he was waiting for this to finally become <laughs> relevant again. After expressing condolences to the football star's children. <laughs> <laughs> not the murderer's children <laughs> after expressing condolences to the murderer's children and quote love and compassion of ron goldman's father fred and sister kim kaylin then addressed the family of the beautiful nicole brown simpson may we always cherish your memories and continue nicole was a beacon of light i mean that's nice of him to get on there and say that 
Earlier today, Fred Goldman, the father of the victim, Ron Goldman, said that uh, the death of O.J. Simpson is no great loss to the world. Simpson stood in trial in 94 for the murders of Goldman and Simpson, but he was acquitted. He was later found liable, as I said, after a seven-week trial. The jury awarded the plaintiffs $33.5 million in damages. The families would fail to recover most of that judgment, meaning they bankrupted O.J. Simpson, which is why in 2005 he's stealing satellite cable. <laughs> In the NBC News interview, Fred Goldman said today, the only thing I have to say is it's just a further reminder of Ron being gone after all these years. It's no great loss to the world. It's a further reminder that he's gone. Interview with TMZ, Goldman attorney David Cook said, OJ died without a pen, without without penance. I thought he was going to say a pittance, meaning he had no money. But he died without a penance. And then Goldman's remained interested in discerning what money and assets he may have left behind that they can collect on the judgment. Well, that's nice. Hopefully something's lying around that they can pick up on. Uh, <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Uh, Chris, Caitlyn Jenner, who's previously married to Chris Jenner, the ex-wife of Simpson lawyer Robert Kardashian and step-parent to Courtney Kim, Chloe and Rob Kardashian, tweeted the simple good riddance. Oh, the hashtag OJ Simpson. You know, I'm being pretty glib about it, but good riddance, you know, it's, it's a little meme. Uh I'm with you. I mean, uh, I mean, how the guy? It's not clever. At least be funny. If you're going to be mean, at least be clever. I guess. Exactly. And then, and then throw the hashtag OJ Simpson. There you go. Interview today. Uh, NB, New York's ABC Seven Eyewitness News. Gloria Alfred, representing Nicole Brown Simpson during the trial, said OJ Simpson did kill Nicole Brown Simpson and Ron Goldman. May they rest in peace. She added that the Simpson was found liable for the murders in the civil case, and it's fair to call him a killer. I don't know about that because people get sued about things, and it's just a preponderance of evidence. So I hate to go all failure to stop and real legal on you here, but... No, I, you know, I was going to ask you to do so because it's... Oh. This, no, this is, this is big because he was acquitted of the murders, but then found liable in the civil. Yeah. So, so in a court of law, if we're determining whether or not you're going to prison... We've got to have you guilty beyond a reasonable doubt. Not all doubt, but beyond all reasonable doubt. Number was wise. I'm going to say that's like a 95 out of 100. You've got to be sure. Yeah. Jury said gloves don't fit. Got to quit. So we cut them loose because they just there was a there was a shadow of a doubt that he did it. It wasn't. I wish I had a remote for my camera to zoom in on on the picture, but I don't. That's okay. We'll get to it later. We'll we'll show it some other time. But uh, when the jury uh, was hearing about monetary damages, putative damages, and whether or not a civil court could hold OJ responsible for their lives being over, it's 51% or 50.1%. It's literally just a little bit more than half. If a jury or a judge says, you know, it's more likely than not that you killed these people or you're responsible for their death, the whole scale tips and, and he had to pay all that money or at least bankrupted him or whatever. So... This this commentator saying it's fair to hold him or hold, to say that he's a killer. Uh, it's fair to say he got sued for killing someone, you know, and that's about right. it. But but the right. It was a moral victory. Right. Like everyone was so appalled after OJ got off after murdering them to say that at least he was found guilty uh, in the in the civil court. It's kind of like saying he was found guilty and a more formalized court of public opinion that there's some sort of document saying is responsible, but all it really did was take his money away. You know, it didn't take his life away. He still got, he still got to be out there in the golf course saying, I'm going to find the real killers. And obviously um, it did change his life and put him on a more criminal path, like to the point where he's, you know, getting guns together and having to go try to rob people who own his memorabilia because he needs that money back. And he can't get ahead at all, obviously with his judgment against him. Uh, and so he was, you know, he was operating in the red for the rest of his life, which, you know, caused actually, lots of- I actually think he was doing like some very, very small speaking engagements. People were inviting there- him, to come. but every time he'd show up, like he'd get booed, he'd get booed right off the fucking stage. Well, I mean, being a, being a murderer is not terribly popular. The thing is, is I think that there's, uh, if someone, if he wanted to go speak about those things, I know at one point he was talking about writing a book, if I did it or whatever, but there's laws that prevent you from making money off of that sort of thing. And if he went out there and he tried to, uh, write book deals or, uh, be a producer on a movie about his own life or something, you know, he would be sued big time. And obviously he didn't have the money to lose. It was like, you know, trying to get blood from a stone, which is perhaps a bad turn of phrase in this case for people that are knifed to death. But well, I bet uh, it'd, be, it, it'd be a slasher movie, I'm sure. Yes, <laughs> it did. It did ruin his life. 
and uh, everybody did hate the guy, and he was never able to be, you know, the hero of commercials. And the Heisman got taken away. And you know, of all the Bills players who get remembered, uh, you know, he's really not one of them. You know, so his legacy was tarnished and destroyed. And you never see anybody walking around in a throwback number thirty-two, you know, Buffalo Bills jersey, except for those people who are really cheeky. So. You don't really ever get to see that anymore. And of course, he kind of paved the way for other guys like Aaron Hernandez and others. But um, so she says, I don't mourn for OJ. I do mourn for Nicole Brown Simpson, her family. They should be remembered. Well, you know, maybe we'll have to do a big case breakdown on that sometime uh, just because that was huge. And what's interesting about it, Keith, is that, you know, this was a huge part of uh, our lives as people who lived at the latter part of the 20th century. It was a huge, I mean, you know, Jay Leno every single night, Norm MacDonald every Saturday. I mean, Norm MacDonald, his career got derailed over this too, because there was an exec at NBC who lived in Southern California. Obviously, you know, they're based out of Los Angeles or Burbank or whatever. And he was good friends with OJ or he was a fan of OJ from his time at USC or whatever. So he's still on SNL. Like, listen, you got to stop doing the OJ jokes. And of course, it's the biggest moment in pop culture. Sure, SNL, SNL always goes after pop culture, everything. But Norm MacDonald uh, refused to let it go. And so that's how Norm MacDonald lost his job. And that that derailed his life, too, because, you know, uh, even though I'm I'm sure he he did fine for himself, uh, he never got he never got his his, his life kind of back on the same trajectory that was he was he also destroyed his life through gambling so i don't i don't want to just say that it was uh, getting fired from snl that that blew him up he had his own problems too but today when i found out that he died and i got ready to text you and you had found out 30 minutes before me and i threw my fit down in an angry rage <laughs> <laughs> i uh, i was just like how sad is it that norm didn't outlive him that norm didn't get in one last good oj joke so yeah one last joke just one last hurrah it's kind of too bad but um let's, let's look at uh, some of the comments we got uh johnny's here a bills fan tonight i wonder if he's a, was a big uh buffalo bills fan back in the day or if maybe johnny's not even old enough uh we got uh jill uh, billy 007 felony melanie's here felony melanie by the way is required to be here <laughs> as like an act of congress she's not allowed to miss any show that i do armory nights here <laughs> um jill says r.i.p to norm by the way jill uh, someone the other night said uh that I gave a, a, a line on Tuesday night in the in the style of Norm McDonald. I don't think I've ever been paid a higher compliment. Johnny says he's 34. Yeah, he doesn't remember uh, O.J. Simpson. He doesn't even remember the trial at that age. Um, thank you all for joining us. we got uh, quite a few people here watching tonight, probably because we have a lot of people uh, wanting to find out what's going on with O.J. Simpson. We don't re we don't normally get to break news on this uh, on this uh, Thursday thing. Nothing ever happens on a Thursday. It's a perfect gonna, day. Perfect day. Per perfect day. First day of the Masters. I'm going to go ahead and do some quick ad reads. Yes, uh, sir. The show is brought to you by Ghostbed. Ghostbed's this company that sells ghost beds. So it's like a mattress and a bed, and at night you go there to sleep. But the amazing thing about Ghostbed is that uh, they're amazing. So you, you can get really good sleep on a Ghostbed. Go to ghostbed.com. Use the Wolfpack offer code you can save up to 40 percent on everything that they have across their website it sleeps so good it's scary as eric tansy says we appreciate them being a sponsor of failure to stop uh, they have been uh, making beds in america and supporting veterans and first responders for the last four years and probably a lot longer after i leave so we appreciate ghost bed for supporting the show do go over there buy a ghost bed tell them tansy and the gang sent you with the offer code we would really appreciate it keeping the show growing strong in 2024 shows also brought to you by factor meals chances are if you're sleeping you're also eating both are signs that you're alive and if you're going out to the grocery store after a long day of being a first responder and having to put up with another throng of those chumps all being super aggressive and behaving as though scarcity is a thing uh, just go home instead. Your food from Factor Meals should be there waiting for you if you use the offer code Wolfpack50. That'll save you half off to start on your first week. They have over 300 options. You can get on the website, choose what you want to eat in advance. You don't have to eat on a whim. You don't have to eat emotionally. You can just choose it all out. You can do your meal prep uh, in advance. They have over 300 options, like I said, and they'll bring it to your house, reverse trick-or-treat style. But, Kiefer, I know what you're saying. No, this is not frozen food. Stop it. This is not TV dinners. This is not kids cuisine or Hungry Man or Swanson. No, this is delicious fresh food. This is supple salmon and delectable, supple. delectable Chinese chicken dinners and rice and corn and beans and ham and whatever you like. It'll be brought right to your house. It's kept cool. 
you can throw it in the fridge for later or in the microwave for two minutes, and you're going to have a meal just like what mom used to make. Remember, Keith, when mom loved you? Yes, I do. And your adjectives are fantastic in this ad read. Thank you. I do own a thesaurus. My mother never loved me, <laughs> which is why I spent all the time reading a thesaurus, looking up for new definitions of love. Uh, the show is also brought to you by Wellness Company. Uh, Wellness Company is a newer sponsor on the show. We appreciate them. You can own your health, your wellness, uh, all with the Wellness Company. Uh, you can go over to the website. You can use the offer code Wolfpack. I believe you can save 10% across the board on their website. Uh, what do they have there, though? Well, they've got solutions that get, help you get well and stay well. They're designed by top doctors. They've got natural supplements like melatonin to help you sleep, to have long, bizarre dreams in which you wake up multiple times from your Christopher Nolan style sleep in your ghost bed. Ever unsure if you've ever actually awoken from the prison of your dreams? That's what melatonin does for you. But also immune support, daily essentials for your mind and energy, your digestion, your metabolism. Your Centrum Silvers, if you're as old as Kiefer and you need three pills a day just to feel normal. Keith, if you use one of those little pill containers that has it every day of the week and has all of your pills in there, guess what? You are not rock and roll anymore, my friend. You are old. And I don't know if you're there yet. <laughs> old school. You're Yes, now you're old school. I'm going to take my pills like I'm old school. You're rocking a Centrum <laughs> Silver to help keep me level. You I'm not there. I'm close, but not there. Prescription meds also, antibiotics, you can stock up before the next emergency. Medical kits, contagion kits, first aid kits. You can get a membership. You can free yourself from Big Pharma entirely with the wellness company. Like I said, get 10% off with that offer code. We appreciate them supporting us. We already covered OJ being murdered. He's gone in by, by ass cancer. He's done. <clears throat> this was our lead story until uh, O.J. Simpson did us the favor and died. Honestly, of all the people who are profiting today, maybe me and Keith the most. There's probably Hopefully. others. Uh, I wanted to talk about uh, ex-NFL linebacker Terrell Suggs, who was arrested after an incident of terror at a Starbucks drive through uh, Why am I covering this? Because it's the most NFL story ever. Uh, I'll read you the article. Ex-NFL linebacker Terrell Suggs, known for playing, I believe, with the Raiders and the Ravens. Teams, a ton with the Ravens. Teams both known for having very, very scary and slightly criminal defenses. You know, uh, Ray Lewis, you know, I mean, I don't hate to drop names or whatever, but kind of comes from that brand. Uh, he was arrested on assault charges in Arizona after an, after an incident at a Starbucks drive through Can you just imagine this guy uh, at a Starbucks? I, I uh, but it, when I read this, I couldn't even imagine it was a freaking Starbucks. Like, are you kidding me? Well, he's probably picking up coffee for somebody else. But this is such an utter, utter everyday incident. Uh, but what's different is, is that he's got deep pockets and you and I don't. Former NFL linebacker Terrell Suggs was arrested Tuesday in Scottsdale, Arizona, on two charges relating to a suspected road rage incident in March at a Starbucks drive through Boy, he, uh, he should have skipped the soy. According to Scottsdale Police, Suggs faces charges of threatening and intimidating and disorderly conduct with a weapon. He was released Wednesday morning. So does that mean he literally spent the night in jail for this? I think it literally means that. It sure. It sure still to, sounds like it. I would have to do some double checking on that. I highly doubt he spent the night in jail. Suggs allegedly threatened to kill another driver after Suggs backed into the car while moving in reverse in the drive through line. Idiot. You know, why would you do that? You know, there's going to be a car behind you. And I know what you're thinking, because I've done this before. I've backed up. I'm like, well, they're going to see me and they're going to back up too. They're on their phone. They're listening to Shania Twain. They're not paying attention to you, buddy. And even though there should be enough room behind you, there's not. So after Suggs backs his Range Rover and he made contact with another car, which you have to imagine was pretty gentle. The two men got out and it was a brawl for it all. Queensbury fisticuffs, old school style, the same way that me and Kiefer fought when we were in North Carolina one year ago today, Kiefer. I don't know if you're aware of that. Yes. Oh, how the year go by. Anyway, they began arguing about whether there was contact made at all, meaning this is not a big fucking deal. And even if it was, it's not a state reportable accident. And even if it was, it was in a drive through So you don't even have to call the cops for this. Just call insurance. Right. See, my I, Range Rover got a dent in it from Starbucks. I'll be like, okay. And then that's it. Right. Just so, just move on about your day. F figure your shit out. But anyway, Terrell Suggs is probably roid raging or something. I guess. I don't know. A question mark? You're always going to throw in the question mark so you don't get sued. 
The two then got back into their cars and completed their orders because coffee first, right? Court documents say that as Suggs drove away, he stuck his middle finger up to the other driver, which is a rude insult, which hurt the other driver's feelings. But completely legal. Who? Yes, I have taken 911 calls for rude gestures, if you could believe that. Who then began swearing at Suggs, the former Baltimore Raven who made an oath on the grave of his father never to have the middle finger stuck out at him unavenged. Also, he played for the Cardinals and Chiefs. Stuck out a handgun at the driver's side window, as one does, because when you go to Starbucks, you take your nine with you. And then drove off after telling the other man, quote, I'll kill your bitch ass, which is not nice. Anytime you have two swear words right next to each other, that's pretty uh, pretty grotesque. Well, Police, re- We can make a new catchphrase. Guns up, Starbucks up. Guns up, Starbucks. Guns up. Maybe we should, you and I should just start calling each other bitch ass. I don't think I could pull it off. Oh, I could totally call you bitch ass all the time. You could. I'm not intimidating. I'm like, good morning, bitch ass. Like, I could never do that to you. I would feel bad about it. Actually, you know, I don't even flip people off either. I feel like that's just so low class. Police records indicate that Suggs never pointed the gun directly at the other driver. So, meaning it's not assault, and, but it was interpreted as a threat. Here we come in. Now it's all like, oh, I felt threatened, right? Well, that, wouldn't it that, be brandishing, though? Every state's different, Keith. When I talk to uh, Drew about what constitutes brandishing a firearm or whatever, he starts talking to me about all these statutes I don't even know. Like in the state where I live, if they catch you not having a gun in your hand, you get cited for that. When you move here and you get your driver's license, you get a free pistol. So the rules are completely different here. So. I don't know how I, it is. I was reading point. the article and I was like, all right, so if he didn't point it at the person, it's okay, not assault. That's fine. Might be brandishing, might be menacing with a firearm. I think that's what he was charged with was misdemeanor, like, of, you know, menacing with a firearm. You know, going, going like this, you know, I don't know. <laughs> I don't, I don't want to commit a violation of the law in Scottsdale with my hand gestures here. I'm just going to wave, a, I'm going to wave a nine all willy nilly because that seems like a good fucking idea, too. Willy Nilly was actually my street name. Police oh. records indicate that Suggs <laughs> never pointed the gun directly at the other driver. The entire incident was digitally captured as the other driver had an audio video recording device attached to the front of his car. This is another huge difference between now and the 90s. Everything's under surveillance. And if they didn't get it, Starbucks would have. <laughs> A Scottsdale police officer identified Suggs not from his years playing in the NFL or even playing for the Cardinals. But in the footage, uh, from the footage, after having given Suggs a speeding ticket last December and interacting with him during a court hearing for the ticket. I guess if you give Terrell Suggs a speeding ticket, you're probably going to remember the guy, even if you're not a big Ravens fan. I mean, if you even watched a glimpse of the NFL over the last, what, 10 years-ish, you're going to know that face. Yeah, same as Ray Lewis. I mean, he's kind of synonymous with that Ravens defense. They that. were they were scary, just scary looking people. Period. And as we all know from a couple of weeks ago, the Baltimore Ravens may or may not be a criminal organization. Uh, Representative Suggs released a statement by way of ESPN on Wednesday, suggesting that Suggs feared for his safety. I want to get his stats on the screen. Could you do wait? That? Wait, who 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 released that? Suggs is a representative, meaning okay. his attorney or a spokesperson or his guy. So this is what he says. You ready? I'm going to read it in my Terrell Suggs voice. Oh, I can't wait for this. (laughs) I was in a quiet area of Scottsdale. (laughs) I don't know what he sounds like. That's just, you know, it's not like that. In the middle of the day at a Starbucks drive-thru near my home, when an incident happened with a vehicle behind me, I was getting coffee. I was not looking for any trouble when the man in the other car other vehicle escalated the situation i feared for my safety not knowing what his intentions were throughout the incident i was the one who felt in danger while fearing i would be followed home even though the entire thing happened at starbucks and not on the way home and for the safety of my family nearby at my residence well terrell suggs if you have an altercation in which first of all you have a gun that other guy probably didn't so you're safe but also if you leave the starbucks and the guy's following you don't drive home i don't know if that play is in your playbook but maybe if you suspect that someone is following you just 
circle around on them or go through a red light or drive to the police station. All of these fairly effective at putting an end to that. Any weapon sug zones will have to be given up as part of his supervised release, and he is due in court on April 29 for a preliminary hearing. Suggs played 17 years in the NFL. Holy shit, 17 nice. years. That's a long time for a football player. For a long linebacker? Time. Holy crow. Winning two Super Bowls, NFL Defensive Rookie of the Year, and the year I graduated from high school, 2003, a no Defensive chance. Player of the Year in 2011, a seven-time Pro Bowl selection. He was a first-round draft pick in 2003 out of Arizona State. At this rate, he will be murdering a family member before 2026. <laughs> so I put, in the I put in the podcast on Terrell Sugg's watch right now. Yes. Yes. <laughs> we'll have another late-breaking late breaking episode another, another I, I, I will say i mean terrell suggs was a bad ass i mean he was 17 years a to be able to do that b the the hits that he put on guys if you even watch even a couple clips of the nfl he i mean he he was he was a mean son of a bitch <laughs> i, I have no doubt there. about that sorry i know I'm, I'm acknowledging jill in the chats you're supposed to ignore me and just keep going but I mean, to 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 your point of backing up in a Starbucks line, you're you're in Starbucks, dude. I mean, how threatened can you really be for somebody wanting to order uh, a venti latte? Yeah, uh, how yeah, threatened how, are you really? Threat He's probably getting something with uh, soy, like I said, or oat milk or something. He was probably getting a frappuccino or something. Can you imagine that big old boy like drill sucks a frappuccino with extra caramel drizzle? You know what I mean? I don't go. I don't drink coffee. I don't go to Starbucks. Uh, but I, I only know the sizes. I don't know all the extra. The I, extras. I don't why. know the menu. When I go, I feel terrible. And then I'm always like, "Can I have a large?" They're like, "Do you mean venti?" I'm like, "I mean large." The biggest one he got, sons of bitches. I'm in America, and I get, and I get that. I, I even took two, two years of Italian, so I get, I get what they're going for. But just give me the large. Like, don't make me play your, your weird. Like, uh, it's like uh, Dave Chappelle says, like, you could be whatever you want to be, but like, what role do I have to play in your self image? <laughs> Don't make me a part of your self-image. Just give me the big one. Sometimes I just say, give me the biggest goddamn cup of coffee you've got. I don't care what it's called. And they're like, oh, the Trenta. I'm like, whatever. They always have to tell me, too. Like, I'm not going to learn Italian. They they hear, they hear you through the speaker. They pull up. They're like, oh, yeah, get him the biggest one. Oh, he needs I, it right now. By the way, everyone's mad at me because I'm not one of these... Um, <clears throat> Uh, what is it? Black Rifle coffee cup. It's just I'm not I'm not that into coffee. I just drink whatever's you know cheap and available in the comm center or uh, freeze dried coffee. To be honest with you, Keith, you a big coffee guy? No, not at all. I drink Diet Dew in the morning. That's my coffee. That's uh, bizarre, and it explains a lot. And it's also not surprising as a firefighter. I wanted to make one remark while I remember it. Speaking of back, Black Rifle Coffee Company, uh, there's a, a long history of association of association with this podcast and the people who paved the way. I'm talking, of course, about Mike the Cop. I wanted to mention, we all love Mike the Cop. Love Mike. We are required to because we're on this podcast and we do technically owe everything to him because this podcast wouldn't exist without him putting his name on it. I will say that I did agree with Mike on everything. And one of the things I didn't agree with Mike on was is that Mike had no respect at all for sports. I guess I guess that he doesn't really like the NFL or he doesn't like what he views as the entitlement of athletes. But you know what? A lot of people in uh, first responders do like sports. Like I like it. And Keith likes uh, foot. He likes baseball and football. And so I keep getting people in the chats and they keep saying to me and uh, Jill, I don't want you to feel like I'm coming at you. But they keep saying this thing that Mike was known for saying, yay, sports ball. I just want you to know that that stopped being funny the first time I heard it years and years and years ago. <laughs> Pretending you know nothing about sports just makes you seem silly in a culture that's largely driven by sports. Football is one of the largest industries in the world. Don't pretend you don't know who Patrick Mahomes is. Don't pretend you don't know who Michael Jordan is. Don't pretend you don't know the basic rules of baseball, football, basketball, whatever. So this whole yay sports ball, I'm too cool for the subculture of sports. If you're going to keep putting up that front, you got to find some other way because you're just repeating the same joke for four years. And I love you guys, but it's wearing a little thin. So anyway, <laughs> speaking of Suggs uh, getting arrested and OJ murdering people, uh, we got uh, Rasheed Rice 
arrest warrant going out for that guy for his old thing uh going up in what was it north dallas where he caused a six park pile up pile up we covered yeah. that a few weeks ago that was a big one we showed the crash from that there was they suspected that he was uh that he owned a uh what was it a lamborghini soccer mom vehicle that he was driving I, bu- I believe it was the Lamborghini was leased under his name. He owned the Corvette. I don't, I cannot remember for the life of me without going back to the article, which vehicle he was in allegedly. Maybe it will be in this article that I'm about to read from the NFL. I, I hope, I hope it is. The Dallas police department on Wednesday issued an arrest warrant. I don't think police departments issue arrest warrants. Do they? Doesn't a judge sign off on that? No, uh, it's usually a prosecutor, right? Well, the prosecutor will, you know, want the bench warrant or they'll, you know, yeah, a warrant after complaint, ish. but the judge signs it. Anyway, I just want to just start right out of the gate that Grant Gordon over at NFL may not have his legal jurisprudence down. So let's approach all of this with a grain of salt. Yes. Dallas Police Department may have been involved in the issuing of an arrest warrant for Kansas City Chiefs wide receiver Rasheed Rice, quote, in regard to serious bodily injury car crash that took place on March 30 on a Dallas highway. Rice, 23, is facing... Eight counts of aggravated assault. Holy hell. Eight counts. Do you guys know what this means? It means he is faux show sure not playing for the Chiefs this year if there's any substance to this at all. Oh show. Oh show. <laughs> collision involving serious bodily injury and six counts of collision involving injury stemming from a chain reaction collision that involved a Lamborghini that Rice was driving, a Corvette that four other vehicles were driving, four other people were driving. The crash left four other people with minor injuries, police said. I'm glad we're finally addressing the other people aside from the famous people and his friends. Theodore Knox, 21, was determined to have been driving the Corvette. He has been issued an arrest warrant and is facing the same eight counts, according to a police statement. The passengers in the vehicle will not be charged, although they should. I'm just kidding. They probably shouldn't be charged. Uh, per Dallas Police Department. Rice and Knox are not in custody at this time. Of course not. They're rich and famous. The investigation is ongoing. The NFL has been closely monitoring developments in the incident. And NFL Network insider Ian Rappaport reported per a league spokesman. I'm going to take a pause right here. I'm going to get on my soapbox. Please do. Ian Rappaport is not an NFL Network insider. He works for the NFL. <laughs> He's their public information officer. He's not a network insider. When the NFL wants to release a statement, they're like, what do we want the public to know? And how do we want them to know it? They're like, go tell Ian Rappaport. Go to Ian, go to Ian Rappaport. The biggest con job in media is that he's some sort of network insider. He's the public information officer. Well, I mean, he's inside. He's inside the NFL. But, it, it, but he clouts himself as being an insider. It's it's a better title. It's just like having a a, a stupid ass title. Were you talking that whole time? Because it took my headphones off. I know place. I saw you. Okay, I thought you, you probably were. had you probably had good takes. Anyway, back to the crash. Rice and Knox left the scene. Rice was leasing the Lamborghini and owns the Corvette. Why was he? I guess Lamborghinis are so expensive that even if you're a like multi millionaire, you still have to lease it. Or is is that just a good option for like when you run out the miles and you turn it in for a new Lamborghini? Have you done that before? Well, it, it it was a Lamborghini SUV, which I had never seen. And somebody somebody in the chat said, uh, oh, Will Craig, Lamb- was it Lamborghini Unis? It's a Lamborghini SUV. That sounds side note. Well. Side note, today I saw the first Mustang SUV that I've ever seen on the road, ever. And oh, I'm like, gross. why in the fuck would you spend that money with a a, a Mustang with a hatchback? I'm not That's a awful. huge Mustang fan, but I know what you, they look like. Do you do you think it's because of like certain mandates about electric cars? Like they've already got the Mustang Mach E, and like they're saying that like they're going to transition to all all ele- electrical vehicles. And like the president's making up this baloney about how there's not going to be any new gas cars after the year 2030. Yeah, okay, as, if, as if it were up to him to uh, uh, legislate that. Um, but uh, do you think it's them just trying to open up a new segment where they're like, okay, uh, in six years' time, we're looking at a a potential fork in the road. Should we reestablish the brand, the Mustang brand as being something that's going to fit into one of these exceptions? Cause that's, that's where the SUV came from to begin with, right? Like back in the late seventies, we had the gas crunch. 
Uh, we had President Biden, I mean, Carter at that time, causing, you know, uh, all kinds of problems with OPEC. We didn't have gasoline here. They passed the CAFE standards for emissions, meaning that vehicles couldn't have over a certain amount of emissions. So sedans went the way of the dinosaur. In comes the station wagon, the hatchbacks, and eventually the SUVs and the light trucks. And everyone starts driving uh, the Cadillac Escalade is the is the vehicle that was designed to cut down on emissions in this country because the government fucks everything up and makes it worse. So if you're an environmentalist, by the way, you would just have to hate the fact that we passed emission standards because it has made everything a lot worse. So I wonder if that's what Lamborghini is doing to try to maintain their, their, their market. And you have to remember Lamborghini too, operating mostly overseas, like their market for the money's really being spent is not in this country. Um, and you know, most of the world's under the Kyoto protocols and other things like that, uh, where, uh, their emissions tests are probably a lot more stringent and making it a hatchback gets them around that. Keith, what do you think about the Kyoto protocols? I have zero information <laughs> to the Kyoto protocols. I'm not even going to lie. I mean, I can sit here and try to bullshit it. You know what? I think the way that they they established them at first. No, I have no idea. No, but, this is a sports show. But, but, read, but reading that article that it was a Lamborghini SUV, and I was like, I've never... Never ever in my life, I don't see many Lamborghinis, but I'm I'm on the internet. I've never seen a picture of, so I had to Google it. Fucking weird, for one. But two, I want to know which which vehicle he was in, because the the video of whoever's vehicle it was, where all everybody's walking down the side of the highway, they're like, "All right, fuck this, we're out. I'm done." He, I mean, you could. It was very to me. It was very plain to see that it was him. The fact that he's now just now getting an arrest warrant issued boggles my freaking mind. Because, well, what, what are we two weeks after? Things take time. And I, I think with, you know, if, if you say that a case because it involves a high profile person, you're going to treat it like everyone else. You're wrong. If you get it wrong, it's going to be a whole thing. So you really got to make sure you got it right. You've got to make sure he can't account for himself. You're getting warrants for a cell phone, making sure he was in the area. You've got to have somebody who's saying that he was driving. You got to get his statement. You know, hopefully he's on your side. Maybe they're even already ready to make a plea with him, you know, so that he can, you know, a Ray Lewis type plea. So he can go back and be an OTAs. If he, you know, goes on some sort of extended probation or something. I like Captain Micah's comment. <laughs> was it white? Uh, the Lamborghini or the driver or the police officer <laughs> or the coffee. <laughs> where, where are you going with that? I love it, though. Yeah. Oh, thanks to everyone who's in our chats. Uh, but uh, so anyway, days after the collision, it, uh, Rice posted on his Instagram story that he was taking full responsibility for it. So I'm guessing they're trying to structure some kind of plea deal where he can continue uh, to play for the Kansas City Chiefs and face some sort of uh, intensive community service program or something. And of course, even after this is over, even after he pleads guilty to something, some kind of deal. There's still the civil case where he's going to have to pay out through the nose uh, to these people. And, yeah, uh, that was a big, I mean, that was a big accident. And I actually know w one of the guys that's in my motorcycle club was working that accident. You have know a lot of people. Well, kind of suspicious. Is it? Is it really? I, I don't know. How do you know? How many, so many, how come there's so many people like. Well, I'm in, I'm in a motorcycle club that, that is, that spans the country. And we're oh. police, police and fire motorcycle club. Oh, first responders. All right. Sorry, I won't. I meant I didn't mean to imply that that was silly. I feel like you're judging me right now, John. Uh, no, no, I love it. I, I'm an idiot for driving around in four wheels. And sometimes the, it's, sometimes the, it's only two. But, you know, the the chats can be can be our marriage counseling right now. They can be. I'm actually I, you know, <laughs> honestly, between this show and Tuesday, I get a lot of marriage counseling uh, done. <laughs> Uh, I wanted to touch base on the uh, Michigan Panthers, Jake Bates, uh, kicking it again. But before we do that, I wanted to go over to the Bleacher Report, just talk some general NFL stuff to kind of cleanse the palate. For for two weeks in a row, we've been talking about NFL players or their criminal doings, killing people, uh, <laughs> crashing into people, uh, hitting them at Starbucks, throwing guns at them, various things. I thought, like, you know, we could just talk about, like, the game itself and maybe some overpaid uh players uh, after 2024 peak uh, free agency. This is from the Bleacher Report, which is normally a source that I like to read. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not going to vow for them or anything, but I just thought I would go through. We're not going to go through all 32 teams because who's got time for that? But I wanted to go through some maybe some of the teams here and see if you agree with uh, their takes over there. Of course, this comes from a Brad, a Brad Gagnon. 
who's probably some guy who gets paid to do a lot more, paid paid a lot more than us uh, to think about this all the time. You and I are putting out fires and saving lives, and he's a full time sports guy. But you know what? The whole premise of the show is that you and I get to have an opinion, and uh, I was right about the kickoff thing, so I guess I'm going to go ahead and uh, say once again to Pat McAfee, I was right and you were wrong. All right, (laughs) here's a huge one. Buffalo Bills, uh, Vaughn Miller, he signed a six-year, $120 million contract, 35 years old. He's paid $6.7 million per tackle (laughs) during the sackless 2023 season. No sacks this season. They paid a, a huge amount of money to get him in there to shore up that defense. They thought that uh, Super Bowl winning edge Von Miller was going to be something that was going to be a major contributor for them. Not only did he not contribute any sacks, but he had his own domestic violence thing. Uh, They're saying that he's their most overpaid player. Do you agree or disagree, Keith? Uh, I completely agree. Is it just because you can't name a single other Buffalo Bills player? No, I I think that, I mean, Von Miller is is a great player, but I think he's also kind of getting up there. Yeah, he's he's getting up there. I mean, it's that's a lot of he, fuck money. He's kind of like Stefan Diggs, where like if you are a great player, we will tolerate, and I mean this in a business sense, not like in a moral sense, because like we're not going to tolerate wife beating. Like, no, but I mean, like they're not. The less useful you are in the field, the less and less and less they're going to put up with you as a hassle. Like we think about Ray Lewis in two thousand. He's at the height of his career. The Baltimore Ravens? Question mark literally helped him cover up a murder question mark because he was a fantastic player and would go on to play for them forever. And he is the most iconic player to ever play for that franchise. Full yeah. period. Uh, Stefan Diggs had already come from the Minnesota Vikings. He's already got a dubious history. He's not really a franchise guy in Buffalo he trailed off at the end of last season. They don't see, uh, they, they don't see a lot of production out of him in the future. They're like, well, as long as we can still sell the myth of Stefan Diggs, why don't we get him on the trading block? They sent him out to the Texans. I think Von Miller is officially post uh, whatever he's worth uh, hypothetically, and now he's all trouble with that domestic violence thing being a bad look for them, particularly in the NFL. Yeah. And uh, just the deal that they made for him, uh, way too much. Who you got next? Who you got next? Who I got next? New York Jets. Aaron Rodgers. <laughs> I can't really hold last year's injury against them. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. I read Literally. that. I read that and almost, almost spit a beer out. Did you see that the Girl. eclipse was longer than his career for the for New York Jets? <laughs> Dude, the memes that came out with that were so good. <laughs> oh, really, really hilarious. We can't hold a last year's injury against him, but we're still talking about a forty-year-old. Yeah, he's older than yeah, me. You can, and I mean forty. I mean forty-year. 40 years old isn't old, but in NFL, it's old. Well, and, and you for, gave him a shit ton of money. And I mean, granted, yeah. he take he took great care of his body. Ayahuasca involved as well. You love that. I know. I do. I haven't had it yet. I have a buddy. That no, died. I mean, you love mentioning it. I don't know if you love adjusting it or whatever. I, I haven't done it yet, but uh, okay. when I retire, I probably will. Soon. But it's to me. He's four, he's a forty year old quarterback. He's not Tom Brady. He's not Tom Brady. We we've talked about and make made the joke of well, he's almost like a bionic man and you know maybe father time, but was still f- producing. Aaron Rodgers sets foot on the field first game, boom, done. Two and a half yeah, seconds in. Some of that is because of the playing field there uh, in New York. They've got the it, World Cup it, coming. Is it? Yes. Look how many people got hurt for the Giants and the Jets last year. They've got the the artificial turf there is killing people. I think it got Daniel Jones, didn't it? Got him too. Uh, I don't know. I, I think I got both New York quarterbacks last year. I would have to we, double check that. But we, I, we may agree or disagree. Let's look into it and meet back this time next week. Because I don't have great. anything else to talk about next week, unless <laughs> unless some other like murderous football player does. Um, <laughs> We're still talking about a 40-year-old who hasn't put up strong numbers since 2021. He was kind of in that rolling into that, like you said, Tom Brady. I'm the elder statesman of the NFL. I'm the last late great, uh, you know, of another era. Uh, he's counting 68.7 million against the cap this year and next year. So he might be overpaid. Uh, I'll I'll ask uh, the, these four in your division because you might know them better than me. And if you don't know them, you could just say pass. Baltimore Ravens safety Marcus Williams. Uh, pass. I, I'm not. I mean, I know the name, but I'm not super familiar. I don't know them at all. Cincinnati Bengals wide receiver T. Higgins is he overpaid at uh, 21.8 million dollars? No, because we. I mean, we franchise franchise tagged him, but they talked about trading. I want to keep him. I think. I think he's well worth it. 
He has never gone over 75 catches, 1,100 yards, or seven touchdowns in four non-Pro Bowl campaigns. He also hasn't been healthy, but I still, and not being a homer, I still think he's worth, the, the, the guy's got talent. He just, I don't I'm know just, what deal I'm is just here to say I'm just here to say the opposite of what you say to make it a show. That's what I'm here for, Skip. I, hope, I, I was hoping you would. Undisputed. All right, this one we're probably going to agree on. Cleveland Browns. Deshaun Watson, sixth highest player in football and highest in terms of guaranteed money, highest in terms of guaranteed payday, has thrown only 14 touchdown passes and 11 interceptions since the end of the COVID season. He's barely been present. Uh, he's thrown almost as many interceptions as touchdowns, and it's not many of either one. He's getting a huge payday. This was the the greatest move in uh, Houston Texans history, possibly trading away this guy uh, because of all the draft capital they got for it. He ended up getting hurt. He ended up uh, like sitting in the stands. He was not looking over the quarterback room as the Browns ended their season last year. You had Joe Flacco coming out of retirement, putting on a show, everybody hauling in Cleveland. Nobody even gave a shit that Deshaun Watson was there. Everybody was all in on Joe Flacco. Right now, he's just a bad business decision, and it's really helping out the Texans a lot. I think it was it, a brilliant, it, brilliant move. I don't think it was like choreographed. I don't think you could have, you could have necessarily figured that Deshaun Watson was going to melt down and be as useless as this, but it did work out for him, Keith. It, is there is there an asterisk in that stat column for the amount of rub and tugs that he got? You know what? There's so much of that in the NFL. Are you kidding me? Robert Kraft's getting. I know. But he he's an owner. He's not a player, so that's fine. He can do whatever. Well, the point the point is is that if you know you're the wrong guy, it matters, and if you're the right guy, you know, whatever, it doesn't matter. <laughs> Pittsburgh Steelers defensive lineman Cameron Hayward. Do you know him at all? I do. What he's, do you think? Is he is he overpaid? Uh, I don't think he is. Cam- Cameron Hayward is, is he's a stud. He he is he has produced and has continued to produce. And I hate the fact that he's a stealer because we obviously face him, you know, two times a season. And he always has our number for the most part. But I, no, I think I think he earns his money. Steelers are going to go eight and nine this year. I've predicted it. Do you think they're going to go over or under that? No, I, th- I think they uh, let's see with our new quarterback room. Yeah, I'll call him eight and eight. I'll call him eight and eight today on was eight it? eight and one because there's there's seven there's 17 games in a season oh yeah, yeah yeah sorry 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 uh yeah i'll go with i'll go with you on that i'm sorry i, I, I keep forgetting about the eight and nine okay so we're we we agree on that yeah we'll agree. Uh, so i don't think they're gonna i don't think they're gonna sneak into the playoffs although i hate the expanded playoffs i hate seeing a team that that's that's that bad i hate that there's a seventh seed i hated the fact that it was the packers this year that they beat the cowboys i hate the seventh seed so much but take it back to the way it used to be uh they say you can see a pretty clear drop off in the six time pro bowlers impact dating back to 2021 which makes sense considering he's 34 yeah he's old he's three years younger four five years younger than me in 2024 though he'll still command 2.2.4 million dollars at the final season a four-year, $65 million deal. I just wish I could play, play like third-string long snapper just <laughs> just for a year. I'll take a million dollars just to be like the third guy that has to <laughs> just, do that. Just to hang out in the locker room and, hey, man, I got you. Here, I'll, I'll, I'll fetch that football for you. Indianapolis Colts running back Jonathan Taylor. I don't know if you remember much about him, but at least he's in your conference. The 25-year-old put up one great season out of four, but he's now locked at, locked in at a cost of more than $28 million over the course of the next two years. Running backs are almost never worth that kind of scratch. You think it's better to just find some way to get rid of him and just draft? I, I, I do agree with that. I, I thought Jonathan Taylor would be way better than what he's shown. Um, 25 years old. Yeah, I think he's a little bit overpaid. Uh, Kansas City Chiefs safety Justin Reed. Do you want to pass that one or, or go on? No, I'll pa- uh, I'll pass that one. I'll read okay. it, but I'll pass that one because I'm not super familiar. That's okay. Ra- Raiders Devonte Adams, formerly the Packers. You think he's overpaid? Uh, where where's he at? He's at Las Vegas. No number numbers wise. Oh, this is a tie between Adams and the new addition, Christian Wilkins. The former is the second highest paid receiver in sports and appears to be declining at 31, while the latter is now the fifth highest paid defender in the league, despite having never been a first or second team all pro at 28. At least there's more upside with Wilkins. They're just saying that he's he's really an overpaid because there's a newer guy that can do what he can do for cheap. So Adams, Adams didn't 
produce last year what I thought he would. I mean, I remember. Is it our, really? How can you tell looking at the Raiders? You never, you're never seeing a good team, so it's really hard to. If you're not, a, if you're not a fan of the Raiders, like I'm not, it's really hard to tell what people are doing there. Like Max Crosby is great, right? Well, just I guess because you kind of know that, but you don't know anything about him. I don't know. So, like, I mean, going through like fantasy football drafts, you, and you're starting to look, you know, you look at stats, you know, when you get to that point. Um, but Devontae Adams was always one that everybody grabbed. And then you could see last year where he wasn't going nearly as high. And, you know, stupid neighborhood draft. But watching, because I, I try to watch as many football games as I can, he, he just he wasn't nearly as productive as, as he had been in years past. So eh, I think they could move on from him, in my opinion. I think he'll find a good landing spot, but it's you got to find that right team that that's going to fit. But like you said, the Raiders, they're they're in disarray right now anyway. So yeah, let's move on to the NFC. I wish I hadn't brought up the Raiders because I don't even know anything smart to say about them. They're the silver team, Dallas Cowboys. Uh, quarterback Dak Prescott, he's coming off of a good season overall, but the 30 year old again is through multiple interceptions in the playoff loss. That was a terrible loss, and it made him look bad. But the defense also really lost that game. I have to say. There's a lot of there's a lot of talk right now in Cowboys Nation because people are talking about how statistically he actually is pretty good that we have nowhere better to go uh, that he has come through us before. I don't think he, statistically he's not as clutch as say you know uh, Captain Comeback Roger Staubach or even Tony Romo, but that he is a good player and we have to we have to consider with him going to free agency. Do we want him to leave the building? Do we want him to go to the Bears? Do we want him to wind up in Tennessee or some other ridiculous place like that? Because that's the prospect. You either pay the man or you you get to see him play for another team because there are other teams that will sign Dak Prescott. That's the reality. Say whatever you want about him being good or bad. There will be another team that will take him, and then Dallas doesn't have him in the room. Um, he's let, gonna let, be let me having... ask your opinion on this, Mr. Uh, Mr. Dallas Cowboys fan. Oh. So they don't sign him again. Do you think he succeeds in the league? Leaving uh, in terms of what making money? I mean, no, I mean like being a productive player. There's it, it really, really matters to where he goes. I've seen him, you know, do well with uh, different coordinators and different uh, coaches. You know, obviously he's actually, you know, he the start of uh, either this year or last year they had a really bad start and they were able to. It was the start of this past season. They were able to fix things. They were able to turn things around with Mike McCarthy running it. They they went on a good stretch where they started winning after that Cardinals game, and everything went went well. But the problem is is that. Jerry Jones and the the Cowboys they they've got larger systemic problems, and like I said, the defense really lost that game. So I'll, you would see him succeed financially. Is he going to wind up someplace like if he goes to San Diego and all of a sudden he's in a Harbaugh machine? He could possibly do well. I have no idea if that would happen, but you could also wind up someplace where basically you know teams go to die. If he goes to Atlanta, nothing's ever going to happen for him there. I think it would be totally dependent on where he wound up. I think it's going to have to be very specific. If he leaves Dallas, it's going to have to be very specific where he goes. And if not, he is going to flounder, and then you will see him right off into the sunset be done. It'll be interesting to see either way. Yeah. But here's here's what's – here. do you want me to just call it now? Joe called me uh, uh, John Stradamus or whatever. Here's what's going to happen. Because <laughs> I know Jerry Jones and the Cowboys. Here's what's going to happen. Every single week this season, win, loss – Monday morning on Sports Center. In light of the re Cowboys' recent victory, Cowboys' loss, what are the prospects for Dak Prescott getting a new contract? Well, here's what Jerry Jones has to say. Jerry Jones is going to make each and every game basically a vote for or against Dak Prescott to put pressure on him. Dak's going to have to go out there and play as he always has. You know, I mean, you got to remember the first time he went through the con the contract stuff in 2020, he bet on himself and won. Yeah. Um. And then we're going to end up making a huge deal that is going to cripple the long-term success of the team. Dak's going to come out the winner on that. We're eventually going to send the deal anyway. It would, we'll look back in retrospect and say it would have made more sense to get the deal done now, to open up that cap room, to get people into the into the locker room this season. We will look back and say, oh my gosh, look at all these players that came out in 2024. In free agency that had great seasons that could have gone to Dallas. I'm thinking somebody like uh, you know, the running back from Tennessee. What was his name? I'm sorry, I'm blanking oh, uh, right now. 
the Derek veteran? Henry. Yeah, Derek Henry. Yeah, I was that if say. we that if we had restructured his deal, we could have gone after somebody like Derek Henry or or somebody else in free agency, rather than this one linebacker who used to work uh, for Mike Zimmer in Minnesota. We're gonna we're gonna say in retrospect we should have made this deal, but we don't ever do that in Dallas, so that's how it will go. Um, and but we'll end up making the deal anyway, and he will he will not retire from the Cowboys probably for another six or seven years. Okay. No, no, right. no. I no, I like that. It's just, I think I think it's one of the, it's it's Dak's identity right now. It's just a matter of whether Jerry wants to keep Dak as the identity. He Jerry cannot get outside of himself. He cannot stop running the team like it's 1995. Uh, he'll never figure it out. I mean, you're it, absolutely I mean, correct. They, they can't. He can't. We're we're long past the idea that Jerry's going to have a, a moment of self reflection or revelation on, and that he needs to change anything he's doing. Even he's, this year, he's almost acting like Joe Biden right now. Oh, you stop it! I don't come after you like that. <laughs> and I don't just say that because I don't know who owns the Bengals. Anyway, let's move on. You're mid depressed. Mike, Mike Brown. He acts like Joe Biden, so it's fine. Okay, but I didn't say this is the point. New York Giants quarterback Daniel Jones. Uh, this also feels too easy. The 26 year old has been a complete bust with an 85.2 passer rating through five pro campaigns. It's four year, $160 million contract carries 47.9 million cap hit in 2024. Will he even be the starter? They're asking. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know either. I don't know if he'll be the starter all season or if he'll lose his job. I think, I think Daniel Jones is kind of on the verge of being one of those ones that might get back. Even they even benched Manning. Now you got to remember at that point, their coach was like the biggest moron in the history of football. But I mean, if they'll bench Manning having a rough season, I think they'll, they'll, that Jones is not safe. Uh, we can move out of the East, go to the NFC. Whoa. I don't know. Saints, Marshawn Lattimore. I don't really know much about him. Cardinals, car- quarterback Kyler Murray. There's still hope for him, they say. He's not egregiously overpaid. He's young and healthy and skilled, but there aren't many options in Arizona. No shit. <laughs> Honestly, are they still paying Josh Rosen? That was like their last big guy was Josh Rosen. Like, let's not forget the like no, you're, you're things right. are depressing in Arizona. They have been for a long time since Kurt Warner. Nah, Carson Palmer was good for them. He took them to the NFC Championship, and I want that on the record. That as soon as Carson Palmer got out of Ohio, he started doing well. Sure. Oh, we're still talking about a guy who's been a part of the league. Uh, he has 28 wins in five seasons, and yet he's the fifth highest played player in the league. That's amazing. Um, that, that actually, that is amazing to me. Last one, San Francisco 49ers, Nick Edge, or excuse me, Edge, Nick Bosa. 49ers don't hand out a lot of dumb contracts. Highest paid defensive player in the NFL history. Uh, he's awesome, but wild money for a guy whose numbers plummeted in 2023. They may end up restructuring him. You know, I think when right. you're, when you're playing defensive edge, I think you take restructure deals like that all the time. I think it's, no, really yeah. and that's, I, I agree with you there. It's, they're going to restructure him because B- Bosa still, even though his numbers weren't great, he's still a beast. And every every offense looks at him, whoever's playing him. So he he's still a force to be reckoned with. I mean, and again, he, he I mean he's kind of he's a younger guy, but getting up there, you know, he's a veteran. I I think they keep him. I think he's good to go. They'll, they'll restructure him and and. He'll, I think he'll kill it this year. It'll be interesting to see. Uh, you had some baseball news that you wanted to cover, and then I'll close out the day with some Jake Bates stuff. So why don't you, uh, why don't you go ahead and talk a little Cincinnati Reds? We're talking baseball. Yeah. So so we have uh, this will be real quick, but we have uh, a little bit of. I mean, it's very early in the season, but a glimmer of hope. We have a very very young team, and it's fun to watch and. So we got a, a fella by the name of Ellie De La Cruz, who is fast as shit. And <clears throat> so the uh, two days ago was today at town or 11th. Something like that. The 11th. Yeah. It's the 11th. I, li- I live, I live a day behind, but uh, so the, the other day it was just amazing watching this kid because he's a switch hitter can cover any, any, position in the infield doesn't play first but i mean he can cover anywhere goes both ways each side of the plate home run 450 feet and then ends up doing a inside the park home run and 
what astounded me and why I wanted to bring this up was the fact that he ran the bases in 14.96 seconds. That's pretty damned fast. 30 feet per second, John. I can't get to first base in 14 seconds. I can't get out of this chair that fast. But he is he is such a such an invigorating force for us at a as a small market team, you know, with the Reds. But it, it's just it, he makes it so much so much fun to watch. And watching the game, he goes sliding into first base. You know, he comes up and he you know he's, you know he's all energetic. But when I saw the numbers. 30 feet per second. He was fast as shit last year. He got faster. But what I love about this kid as well is in the offseason, he, he's Dominican. In the offseason, last year, he had a, an interpreter. Now, I think he, I'm going to be funny here, took a book out of Otani's book. I was going to say, is that person gambling? Better, better and, and said, yeah, I don't need, I don't need an interpreter. I'm going to learn English. So he actually learned English so he could communicate with his, with his ball players, his teammates. Smart. And made that like made that his mission. But this guy, this guy has just absolutely been killing it. He went the other night, he went three for five, two home runs, one inside the park, one, you know, 450 feet bomb. And is invigorating the Cincinnati Reds, but I found that amusing how fast this guy is, and people need to watch him. Anybody that's a baseball fan, just if, even if you're not a Reds fan, just watch the highlights because he's been he's been putting him out there. Um, he made he made a hell of a play, what three days ago, four days ago, that actually changed you know, changed the whole the whole scope of the game, but. I've never heard it broken down like that. How how fast you run the bases and then how many feet you're covering per second on ESPN outside of Ricky Henderson. Now, isn't it a record that uh, he's the, like the first person in forever to do an inside home run and an outside home run in the same game since yes, like... that is correct. Yeah. So baseball, we, baseball is a game of stats, so... You know, I love stats, so this is how you're going to win me over, Keith. Tell me well, some you, stats. You're, you're great with stats, dude. I know you are. But thank you for telling me I'm great. You know what? I, what what's interesting to me about baseball, this was explained <laughs> to me, is baseball is a game of failure that even the best people are not, you know, what is their batting average? It's, you know, really low. Yeah, but they're the best there is at what they do. And so being a consummate failure and someone who would really like it if I could only, if I was successful, like, you know, 0.25 percent you know quarter of the time and i would be considered a phenom of my generation you know like I, I would love that you know that would be great for me i wish that was my standard at 911 that i only had to do one in four calls was even completed you know that would right. be fine yeah you, you did good on one the other you three good on one the other four not so much you know you'll get you'll get that average up you just need more at bats you just need to take more phone calls you you're, know you're batting 250 you're fine yeah um <laughs> It's also just weird because, um, you know, uh, the offense isn't allowed to touch the ball. I don't know. It's a trip to think about baseball. And, and and something that you and I have run into, and what makes it hard with a sports show is you can't – it's hard to, you know, to show video. Yeah, because we get demonetized. Right. I have to, like, flip it around backwards and, like, blur out all the logos. <laughs> But I yeah, mean, to, I have to so, play the South. I have to play the the Korean uh, voice coverage where they just scream. So the video, the video of of him doing this inside the park home run is absolutely unbelievable. But I sent it to you. But then also, I knew we, you know, we couldn't play the video. So like, it's I'm sorry, guys. There, there's just, I mean, it, it's hard. But we we earn almost fifty three cents per video on these, and I'm, that's just change I can't walk away from, guys. <laughs> I just we just can't do it. I, I mean, did you I know need, that, Keith? That like some of these are like, uh, you know, because let's face it, you know, Illegal Shift not the most popular show on the network. The Friday show is a little bit more popular. I'll sometimes look at earnings per video, and it's uh, it can be very low for these. Where you know the the way you make money on YouTube is having lots and lots of videos. That's why we have five shows a week, so we're producing an ass load of content all the time. So we're kind of like uh, nickel and diming ourselves to to pay ourselves. Uh, but these, you know, uh, if we ever had an Illegal Shift that didn't get monetized, you know. Uh, just turn the lights off a little bit earlier, Keith. <laughs> you'll you'll break even. You know what I mean? Right. Not that much. But uh, I, I recommend you to to YouTube Ellie Dela Cruz inside the park home run. Go watch it. 
it's Go i mean it, it's fucking amazing how fast this guy is and it was it was a you know looper in the center field and the center field tried to dive for it missed it it hit the wall and he just kept going and you would have thought you would have thought there was 40 million dollars sitting at the plate because he's still a young guy he's not making a, a shit ton of money right now and are you uh, go ahead no it's just i mean it was just amazing to watch it are you and I going to the uh, Battle Hawks uh, Houston Roughnecks game Saturday, May fourteenth, in St. Louis, Missouri? Uh, I got to look at my schedule. It's nine hours for me to drive that, Keith. I know. I'll, I'll get you an answer after the show. How's that? Oh, geez, nine hours one way, I'm, and and all for a. I don't know. We can call We're, it a team. We can call it a team building trip. Well, the thing is that there's a possibility of there might be another trip coming up. Uh, you know, if you watched uh, the other show more, maybe you might know more about what's going on there, Keith. But uh, you might be invited to that. But that's secret scroll shit. So only 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 my true fans know what I'm talking about there. Uh, let's uh, finish out the show with a little bit of uh, Michigan Panthers news, if you don't mind. A little UFL, yes. U- USFL, XFL news. For, for, for the listeners, I have been paying attention to my St. Louis battle walk. Yes. Uh, I texted John a picture the other day from the bowling alley at the fundraiser I was at just to show him that I was watching. I watched the Roughnecks lose. It's They're going 0-2. They had an undefeated season in 2020, so ups and downs. It's, you know, technically, I, technically, I almost want to check into this because, you know, I know all about defunct teams. I think that the Houston Roughnecks of today, I think the reason why Wade Phillips isn't their coach again this year uh, cuz i think the Houston Roughnecks the team that i love was actually dissolved and the Houston Gamblers of the USFL were, were just rebranded. Oh. So i almost wonder if there's not a direct lineage between the Houston Roughnecks of 2020 and the ones of today. It doesn't matter except that it gets me off the hook i could switch teams then if that's the case, you know what i mean? That make that makes sense to me though. And i might be able to go switch over to the Brahmas, which are 2 and 0. Michigan Panthers coach Mike Nolan. NFL teams are trying to break the rules to contact kicker Jake Bates. This is from the Detroit Free Press. The star of the young UFL season can do without the hype. At least that's what Jake Bates told his Michigan Panthers teammate, former Detroit Lions wide receiver Trey Quinn. This past he was this past week he was like he goes, "Hey, when do you think all this hype's going to stop?" Like kind of like kind of sounds tired of it. Quinn said in a video conference Tuesday. I'm like. You probably you probably good in a week, man. I was like, unless you do it again, and then he hits another one. Bates made his second sixty plus yard field goal in as many weeks last week for the Panthers, igniting even more buzz about his future as the NFL kicker. Perhaps in violation of NFL rules. If you don't remember last week, he kicked a sixty four yarder. He did it twice because they iced him. That's right, they threw a flag or they threw a timeout. They iced his first kick. He did it again. He didn't kick since high school. He played soccer in college. He just goes out there and starts breaking records. I think it was the second longest field goal in professional history. I love that story. He's kicking field goals longer than any any Detroit Lions player ever has. Kickoff specialist in college, Bates, made a 64-yard with three seconds left in the Panthers. 18-16 wins over the Battle Hawks in the UFL opener on March 30th in Ford Field. Bates, who had not made a field goal in a game since high school, made the kick twice, as I mentioned. And they iced him in a timeout last week. Bates made field goals of 52 and 64 yards in a 23, 20 to 13 loss to the Stallions. NFL record for longest field goal is 66 yards set by Justin Tucker, who is a will go into the Hall of Fame for kicking. Absolutely. So, so it's second behind him. Justin Ticker, Tucker set that in a 2021 game against the Lions at Ford Field. So the long we used to have this weird belief that the longest kicks in the history of the NFL were all at Mile High Stadium because the air was thinner. It turns out they're all at Ford Field and they play inside. The Lions had never had a kicker make it more than 60 more than 60 yards in a game. He's got a cult following. Panthers coach Mike Nolan joked about Bates on Tuesday. The following includes a handful of NFL teams who already reached out to Panthers about Bates some of whom have had illegal contact with him or his agent. They're tampering. Outsiders don't touch our players during much, too much during the season, Nolan said. With Jake, somehow some of them are trying to get make efforts to do that. And to be honest with you, hopefully that backs off a little bit because that's, they're not supposed to do that. And maybe that's a rumor, but I heard something the other day and I kind of said, well, let's make sure we nip that in the bud because, look, I want Jake to do it well and I want him to get a chance. I'd love to see him in the NFL and no one right now could do him any good. 
So the best thing I could do is keep those people away from, right? Like you don't want like the uh, future in the NFL, like you don't want that prospect over every single kick that you make, or you are going to psych yourself out and you're going to start missing. (laughs) Right. And he's saying, I'm not helping Jake if I don't do that. Asked to clarify if teams or agents were the ones making the effort to contact Bates. Nolan said a little bit of both. Again, it's just one of those things. I have to consider the source sometimes. An NFL spokesman said by email, and this was not NFL insider Ian Rappaport, <laughs> the NFL teams are not allowed to contact UFL teams about their players, but they're allowed to contact them, but they cannot sign UFL players until after the season. That makes sense. NFL teams are not allowed to, to contact players under a contract with the NFL or discuss the player with their agents, the spokesperson said. So what is, what is he saying? He says that NFL teams are allowed to contact them. But, but they're, they're not allowed. Not, but but they're, they're not allowed to go the other way. Yeah, uh, the NFL teams are allowed to contact UFL teams. So the teams are allowed to talk to teams about players, but they can't talk to the they can't talk to the players themselves. Okay. Oh, they can't talk directly. So like the Lions could talk to the Panthers, but the Lions cannot talk to Bates specifically. It's not like an NFL team could take them today. So if they're getting entertained all for later on, no one said. But the big thing is for them, they could stay focused. And in my eyes, kind of treat them like they're like I do. They're my own kids. I tell them, I say, look, there's nothing much anyone could do for you right now on the outside. So if you don't have an agent, you don't need to go out and get one currently. And you certainly don't need one to go out there and be entertained currently. And you don't need to. And you need to continue to kick well because you can go very far, very fast uh, if things change for you. Keep your focus, and that's the same for all of them. It's kind of amazing that of all the players he's got on his team, it's the place kicker that's getting the it's, most uh, most attention. That's- that's what I was going to say. Is, you would, you would think, you know, there's a couple of quarterbacks in the UFL. I mean, uh, Jordan Tuamu, he's the starter for the D.C. Defenders. He was backing up. Uh, he was backing up in Kansas City at one point. He was backing up Patrick Mahomes. So yeah. it's kind of amazing that we got uh, different specialists doing that. Nolan is a one-time special teams coach, coach with the Broncos. He spent more than 30 years in the NFL. Nolan said that Bates has the leg down to succeed in the NFL and has shown poise and consistency. In his short time with the Panthers, he won't go to the Cowboys because we finally got a good kicker, but that's kind of too bad. Looking at the league and getting into the league for him, obviously, he's not going to have to continue to show consistency through the season. Uh, he's going to have to show consistency. Obviously, yes. If he knocks 60 yarders through every single week, uh, as soon as season, as soon as week 10's over, they're going to the playoffs, assuming Michigan's not there, they're going to have a bunch of people end up outside his house. <laughs> I just think it's so you've great. Kind of set, you've kind of set your bar here. So set, set your bar. Else, you start you start shanking shit, and they're like, "Oh, these yeah. don't matter anymore." He's if, if the hype continues, he's going to have to hire someone to take those inquiries and manage it for him, and kind of be act as someone who is going to work on his behalf. Because if you're just going to focus on your kicking game and not be dealing with all of these people who are trying to talk to you, yeah, you definitely are going to have to get uh, some kind of person to manage that. But good for Jake Bates. Good for him yeah. coming from nowhere and potentially going somewhere. That's why I like that league. I want to say I I appreciate you pushing me to start watching the UFL because I have been and it it is fun it's fun to watch. Well, I'm glad that you're enjoying it. It gives you something else to do. Plus, I uh, I don't have cable, so I don't get to watch as much baseball as I was really hoping. Uh, wanted to acknowledge the people in the chats. Thanks, Marines Blood, for being here. James Russell's been a bit since I seen you. Johnny. Thanks as always for showing up. Jill Billy, you hold a special place in my heart. That's inappropriate? Question mark. Wait, no, it's fine. <laughs> Melanie, Melanie, thanks for being here. Captain Micah, thanks for being here. Will Cray, you are, uh, you know, you're my guy as always. We appreciate you guys for being in the chats, Guns and Cafe, everybody else. Uh, there's going to be, David was here at one point, Mike Dutcher also here at one point. There's going to be an interesting show tomorrow on the Friday show. That's the show that's next up in the feed Friday morning. Uh, I believe Eric may have a special guest. I believe he was texting me while I was live on the air. So we'll see how it shakes out. But I think it's going to be an interesting show either way. Uh, We encourage you guys to tune in tomorrow. That'll be at 11. Otherwise, we'll be back here next week with Monday of comedy. Tuesday, True Crime with me and Kendra. Wednesday is all the news you need to get informed, but without getting depressed. Thursday, uh, of course, we'll be back here with sports. And then uh, we'll go all the way around again. Keith, uh, when's the next time they can catch you? And one more, I'm out of here. Uh, we will be we'll be live uh, Sunday, I believe, at five o'clock. I have to put it out on Instagram, but I believe I secured Dan for five o'clock on Sunday. Sunday live at five, so that'll be good. Uh, you have any idea what you're going to be talking about? Oh uh, well, we're going to hit OJ because we haven't podcasted since then, so we'll hit some OJ stuff, and I'm sure Dan is uh, going to go on the rants that Dan Carroll normally does, and then I have to reel him back in. So it's always entertaining. 
whatever the topic is, it's always entertaining. It's always fun. Thanks so much for watching the show tonight, guys. We appreciate, appreciate you. you. We'll catch you here next week. Guns up, giddy up. See you later.